Have you ever made a chi ball, a ball from your own energy? If you have, was it fun? Was it interesting? And perhaps is this something that's beneficial to do as a qigong practice regularly? Or maybe are there possibly maybe some risks to making qi balls on a regular basis? That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. So someone sent me an email just the other day, and in the email he said that he had recently discovered how to make chi balls, and he said that his health had improved after doing this, and he was wondering if he should just keep doing this regularly every day, or maybe if he should give it a break once in a while. And so I thought, well, that's, that's, there's some interesting parts to that question. And so I'm going to talk about that in this vlog. I'm going to talk probably a little bit more broadly than just the answer to that specific question and look at, you know, how, well, for a start, I'll show you how to make a chi ball um, so that you can try this for yourself and you can experience it for yourself. And then I'll talk about maybe what, what the role of forming a chi ball is, some benefits that come from doing that, whether that's something we should focus on as part of our regular practice and whether or not maybe there could actually be some risks to putting too much of our attention onto making chi balls. So yeah, that's what we're going to do in this vlog. I think I'm going to put some time codes in so you can navigate through the different sections so you should be able to see those at the bottom of the video. And yeah, I'll start with how to make a chi ball. So to make a chi ball, we need to increase the energy flow to our hands so that we're emitting more energy from our hands and then bring that energy together and then be able to move that energy around and, and form it into a ball between our hands. So a big key is, is having our energy flow freely. So doing this after you've already done some other qigong practices is a really good time to do it because those other practices generally will have got energy flowing more freely right through your whole body and you'll then be able to do this more easily uh, in fact after you've practiced qigong for a while and you've become quite proficient at uh, increasing the energy flow through your body you'll find that it becomes quite simple uh, after a qigong practice without doing anything else to simply form a qi ball straight away between your hands or even just regular in day-to-day -day environments if you're able to relax your body and let your energy flow freely to be able to just form a qi ball straight away to begin with though, um, often it's helpful to use some extra stimulation to really bring the energy to the palms of your hands for forming that ball. Again, really helpful to be nice and relaxed right through your whole body first though, because if you just activate the, your hands and the energy's not flowing through the rest of your body, it's not going to work so well. So you might like to start before you actually work just on the chi ball, just to relax your whole body. You could do something really simple, just standing, making some waves gently through your body. So just inhaling as you rise, exhaling as you sink, Inhale as you rise, just relaxing the whole body, exhaling as you sink, opening up the flow of energy through your whole body. Inhale as you rise, and naturally as your energy starts to flow more freely, exhale as you sink. Some of that energy is going to start flowing to the palms of your hands. So once your body's nice and relaxed, then something we can do to stimulate the palms of our hands is simply to rub them together. So ideally we want to rub them quite briskly, so that they become warm, so they become hot. So do this for as long as you need to, to get your hands nice and warm. And then if you pause and just hold your hands apart from each other, you might feel already that some of that heat, some of that energy is actually radiating off your palm into the space between your hands. So you're starting to have some energy emitted from your body. Or if you hold your hands up to your face, your face is often quite sensitive. You might feel that warmth radiating off from the palms of your hands. Something else you can do is clap. Now it works best if you clap at random intervals, so you don't have to follow me, but random intervals work best for this. And you want to clap hard enough that it makes your hands tingle. So then again, after some clapping, if you bring your hands 
close together, you might feel some energy between your hands, like a soft, squishy feeling, like two magnets pressing against each other. And you can work with a squeezing in against that little pressure between your hands, then letting your hands relax out, squeeze in, feel the edges of that pressure, relax out, squeeze in, relax out, and gradually let your hands drift further apart. It doesn't matter whether your hands only get to here or if they get right out here. Just gradually work with that sensation of energy between your hands. And then when you've reached a comfortable distance for you, you can start to roll your hands around the edges of that energy, forming a ball of energy between your hands. And you can just roll around, roll around, And you can play with this ball for as long as you like, exploring the sensation, your awareness of the energy. And in fact, you can do all sorts of things, moving this ball in different ways and so on. But for now, we'll just focus on just forming the ball. And when you've done as much with the ball as you want, you can just condense that energy between your hands, bring your hands closer so the energy becomes more concentrated, and then bring your hands back to your center, your lower dantian, your lower abdomen, and let that energy flow back into your body. So that's how to form a chi ball, um, when you're beginning anyway. As I mentioned, once you're quite proficient at letting your energy flow, you can just quite quickly just form a, a, a ball of energy between your hands quite, quite easily. Okay, so what are some of the benefits of forming a chi ball. As I mentioned, in order for you to be able to form a ball of energy easily or at all, you really need to allow the energy to flow through your body, not just through your hands, but to some extent through your whole body so that it can support the flow of energy to your hands to form that ball. So being able to form that ball of energy it gives you a little bit of a feedback mechanism on how well the energy is flowing through the rest of your body. And so, so, and you'll find this some days if you're a bit stressed or you're a bit tired or, you know, things like this, and you try to form a chi ball and it won't be as strong as it is other days. Whereas on days when you're relaxed and, um, you know, you've eaten well and you slept well and, uh, you know, and, and your body is, your energy is flowing more freely, well, you can form that ball of chi more easily. So it's a great feedback mechanism to see what's happening within your body and whether your energy is flowing well to be able to support that. It's also a really useful tool for, um, for starting to develop your awareness of energy. Because this energy that we bring out between our hands to form a chi ball, it's the same energy that is flowing through our body all of the time. Most of the time we're not so aware of it flowing within our body though, because, because it's there all the time. You know, the pumping of our heart, the movement of our intestines, the functioning of our muscles, our, our chi, our energy is making all of these things happen. And, you know, if, if we were paying attention to that and noticing every detail of that all the time, it would be very distracting. <laughs> We'd have a hard time focusing on other things. There's only so much processing power our mind has at any one time and so much that we can focus on. And so we tend to tune out a lot of the things that are just happening all the time anyway and focus on the things that stand out that we need to do something about. And so, yeah, so often we're not very aware of the energy flowing within our body, but when we bring that energy out of our body and we form a ball, there's other things we can do extending that energy out of our body as well. When we do that, now it's more unusual. It's something different and it's something we can, oh, we can really focus on that. And that then helps us to then turn our awareness back into our body and, and, what, and to be able to connect to and identify and observe what's happening with our energy flow within our body more easily as well. So that's another great benefit that comes from forming chi balls. Now, does that mean that we should practice forming a chi ball all the time? There certainly can be some benefit because again, as a, as a feedback mechanism, if you're focusing on forming a chi ball, naturally you're going to do some things within your body to cause your energy to flow. That's going to be beneficial. 
but there can also be some downsides to that as well. Um, potentially what we can do by focusing so much on our energy outside of our body, on sending energy out from our hands, that we actually neglect the energy inside. And so we actually start to flow too much energy out from our body, which essentially it just tires us out because we're not, we're not uh, maintaining the energy in our body so doing what it needs to do. So it, practiced in moderation, generally this is not going to cause a problem. And particularly if you do what we did just at the end of when I showed you how to form a chi ball and bring the energy back into your body so that you're, you're intentionally shifting your focus from external back to internal. And that then causes, you know, sends your energy back to focusing on flowing internally. So you don't keep just running your energy out. So if you practice in moderation, uh, and you make sure to return your energy into your center, that's generally not going to cause too much of a problem, but it can be an issue if all you do is focus on forming chi balls that you might actually end up draining yourself as part of that. Because what's really most beneficial for, well, for all of us in most contexts is actually to be able to have the energy flowing healthily inside our body rather than necessarily doing things like forming chi balls, right? They, they have their place, and I'll talk a little bit more about another practical application or benefit of forming those chi balls, but as part of just our ongoing regular health and well-being, we want to have that flow smooth, strong, balanced inside our body. And so for most qigong practices, particularly in the early and intermediate stages of their qigong practice, Forming chi balls can be fun, it can be interesting, it can give you some, some good insights and awareness of your energy, and it can also, again, it can act as a little feedback for you of how well your energy is flowing to see you know, how easy it is for you to form a chi ball at different times. But we really want our main focus to be on the flow of energy inside our body, the flow of energy within our meridians, the presence and balance of the energy in our dantian and so on, because these are the things that sustain our health and well-being. And so that's that's more important for us to focus on. So in that way, forming chi balls would probably be a small part of your practice. If you're really wanting health and well-being, and you're going to want to put more focus on practices that are, are tuned into what's happening inside your body. So some examples of those, um, so from the Long White Cloud Qigong, um, courses and programs or some of the practices we do there's a practice called 12 rivers which is for the 12 organ meridians in the body which relate to our organs our posture our emotion and so on and within those practices we stimulate we activate and we balance the flow of energy through each of our organ meridians so that's like really useful and it turns our attention inwards uh, another practice that we do is called between heaven and earth and this one focuses on the Dantian, and then it focuses on the circulation of the extraordinary meridians, which is a, another type of meridian within our body. And so again, it's bringing our awareness inwards so that we can develop health of our internal energy flows. Now, as a natural result of that, uh, naturally, our energy does flow more freely. It does become easier to form chi balls. Our energy field also grows stronger as well, but our focus is on what's happening inside primarily. Um, if you're interested in those practices, uh, we do have some videos. If you go on the Long White Cloud Qigong um, YouTube channel and you look up 12 Rivers or Between Heaven and Earth, you'll find videos there. You'll also find some on the Long White Cloud Qigong website. And one of the instructor certification courses that we do, it's called the Small Universe Qigong uh, course. We, we do those practices as well as several others working with our primary energy flows. So one more potential benefit of forming chi balls. And this is where generally for people, once they reach a intermediate or even more advanced level with their qigong practice, where they're really developing some skill with their energy, they've, they've really got things balanced and flowing inside for their own health first, because that's most important. That's going to support everything else that you do. So once you're starting to do pretty well with that, uh, and your energy is flowing quite well, you may actually start to turn your attention to actually using your energy in some quite practical ways. And that means not just inside your body, but using the energy that you emit 
for affecting things. Um, and so two of the main ways that this was applied historically, one is to healing and the other is to martial arts. And so to be able to activate your energy internally, send it out from your body, whether that be to help to heal someone, clear blockages within their energy, strengthen their energy system, bring it back into balance, or to do the opposite in a martial arts context where, you know, ob obviously with context only in a situation where, you, you know, if, if there was a, a, a reason uh, that's that for violence, essentially, it can be an, a, a tool used for that. If something can heal, it can generally also harm. And so using that energy to block energy, disrupt energy, weaken someone's energy system, throw it out of balance as part of that broader context of combat. So in that context, if you've developed your energy to that extent where everything's flowing well and healthy within your body, you're wanting to start to apply that energy skill externally, well then yes, focusing on building a chi ball, strengthening that chi ball is useful for that, as are other practices where you then start to focus on emitting the energy. But early on in your practice, generally that's not so useful because it can drain you. It's, 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 it's useful in small doses, right? Again, for the reasons I mentioned, for feedback and insight and so on. And it's only once you have a solid foundation in your internal flow of energy that then it can become useful for external application and it can become appropriate to put more emphasis on that as part of your ongoing development. Okay, so hopefully you found that one interesting. Um, a little bit of a different question, um, but maybe one that maybe maybe quite a few people wonder about. I know definitely forming a chi ball for the first time, it can really make an impression. Um, certainly that was one of the first qigong practices that I was ever exposed to when I was a young child. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting, being able to feel my own energy. Um, so I think it's helpful to recognize, yeah, there can be some benefits from doing that, uh, but also to put it into context as to whether you want to really put a lot of focus on that or to take a step further and start to become more acquainted with what's going on with your energy flow inside your body, which is often a bit of a, a trickier process. There's a little bit more to developing that awareness and that skill, but that's what's going to give you a really good solid foundation for health and well-being, which ultimately, if you do want to then refocus on things like forming chi balls and extending your energy externally, is going to support you in being able to do that much more effectively. So if you liked the vlog, please like, comment, subscribe, share, all those good things. I did have another interesting question from someone else recently, so I'll probably make another one about that soon. And yeah, I look forward to hearing you on the next one. Or hearing you. <laughs> I look forward to seeing... Actually, I'm not going to see you. I look forward to you seeing me <laughs> on the next one. Maybe I'll hear from you in the comments.